Salam sejahtera. My name is Emmanuel Aaron Elvin Uping Anak Bernadine, DB190118. Today I would like to present a 4.0 menu research for catering services. 4.1 Understand of Menu What is menu? Menu is the piece of papers that contain the least types of food and beverage items available for purchase, or a list of food or drinks items that will be served to the customer. According to Paul J. McVetty in 2008, in Fundamental of Menu Planning book, menu is the focal point of any food service sectors. It is the list of food or beverages that are available in the restaurant. According to the Management of Food Service Operation book in 1994, the word menu has two quite separate meanings. It can mean the product range that a food service outlet offers or the piece of literature or display used to communicate the product range to the customer. In my opinion, menu is detailed list of food and beverage offerings to the customer or guests with their respective prices. Commonly, menu can be found in a restaurant hotels or even cafes, and it is prepared by a food and beverage service businesses. This is to keep the customers informed about the availability of the various items. Besides, menu is a list of dishes that are available for sale in a food service outlet or that can be served at a meal, whether set for individual items or for the whole meal. It is a powerful marketing tool for food service business. Here are some examples of menu. Go on to the next one, 4.2, menu presentation. Menu presentation are important because it shows or reflects the image of the restaurant. The main point of criteria that is needed in the menu are menu should be stated what cuisine of the restaurant offers. If the restaurant offers Western cuisine, then we already know from the menu itself. Besides, menu are need to be presentable readable, on point, attractive in a creative way. Other than that, menu display needs to be taken care of because that the customer will notice and get the information easily. Menu display such as in a chalkboard, advertising wall or a menu book. If the menu are printed in the menu book, get the right paper or card should reflect the quality of the establishment. Find a phone that fits. Choose a better and suitable phone size and a style that can be read easily by the customer. Next, choose the best graphic, design, team, color, which attractive to the customer's eye. The attractive design will assist in achieving the uniqueness of the particular food operation. The use of the language is also important so that the customer will understand very well and it must be accurate and simple. To boost the sale of the restaurant, it is sure to have a menu book of flyers at the reception in front of the restaurant. Menu should be attractive and creative. This is to attract the customer to try out the food and beverage in the restaurant. It should reflect current awareness and the current eating trends to satisfy customer requirement. Okay, I will make a presentation about menu style. There are five primary types of menu and I will share some information about it along with some more specific types of menu that are in considerate primary menu types. 
The five types of menus most commonly used are a la carte menus, which is list the price for each item separately. While the price tend to higher, a la carte menus have a more flexibility. Number two, static menu. A large menu typically divided into categories that doesn't change very often. Number three, do your menus change daily depending on what available or what the chef prepare? And number four, cycle menus. A menu or part of a menu that has repeated option over a specific period of time. And the last one is fixed menu. A menu with few options and fixed total price and also commonly called a safe menu. I will explain more about a la carte menu. Our customer can choose individual item and combine them any way they want. Okay guys, do you know where does a la carte come from? Let me tell you, a la carte is a French phrase that translates literally as buy the card. It's begun being used in the early 19th century and is not exclusive to food only. Let me give you an example. A subscription to a cable provider can have a la carte channel selection. That means customer can choose which channel they want individual instead of having a set channel package. So, fresh like from the menu, an individual price communicate that a menu or section of a menu is a a la carte. Next, I will explain about static menu, which is a large menu typically divided into categories that doesn't change very often. It's the most widely used menu today, and it's what you likely think of when you think of menus. That's because the majority of restaurants and bars out they utilize a static menu they typically provide the base customer experience because of the amount of option they provide, their consistency, and their easy navigation. The fact that a static menu doesn't change very often means the customer experience is consistent, but the fact that static menu a large makes that consistent experience full of possibility. And as we mentioned, Food and beverage in a static menu are usually categorized into different groups. For food, this may be appetizer, salads, entry, and so on. This makes static menu practically easy to navigate. As you can see in the picture, is an example of two chore menu. That means two chore menus change daily, depending on what available or what the chef prepare. So let me give you some example. Like chicken du chore means that chicken that available today. Likewise, soup du chore is the soup that's available also today in that restaurant. Do you know du chore means French phrase that means of the day. Number four is a cycle menu. Simple words that I can use so we can easily understand is cycle menu is a part of a menu that has repeated option over a specific period of time. And cycle menu also have a definition which is fairly intuitive. I will give you some example so we can easily understand. Think of a sandwich shop that offer a certain sandwich on Monday, then another sandwich on Tuesday, and so on for the rest of the week. If they stick to those sandwich on those days and repeat the week after week, it's called cycle menu. Cycle menus are often used for two reasons. One is that the cooking operation is relatively small and doesn't have the resources to cook to other items of a larger menu. The second is for daily special, like a happy hour menu. Lastly, a fixed menu. A fixed menu also commonly called a safe menu, and they are two common types. 
Number one, the table dot menu, and number two, the prix fix menu. A common table dot setup has a diner choosing one appetizer from two options, one entry from two or three options, and one dessert from two options. And the total price doesn't change. The fact that they a few options and a say total price make it a fixed menu, but with some variability. A prix fix menu is similar to a table dot menu, just without the choice. In that sense, it's less selection of choice and more a list of what will be served. Prix fix menus may seem rigid. But they are excellent choice for chef-driven restaurant that one food item serve as the kitchen intends. I will explain about menu structure. When thinking about how to write a menu, it's important to remember that your menu is read by nearly every case who walks through the restaurant. Much more than a list of item and price, your menu is a reflection of your restaurant concept, style, and the quality you deliver. If crafted properly, menu description encourage customer to order and ultimately set the expectation for their meal. Use these five tips to create compelling description and perfect restaurant menu structure. Number one, placing the price. The problematic price piece. When price are neatly lined up on site of your menu, you are inviting customer to shop dishes based on price and not on the plate or taste preferences. Number two, just keep it short. Sure, you could write about each item on your menu, but description should be concise. Short description don't have to be boring. Use words that pack a punch and language that vivid and enticing, giving just enough information to make attract customer attention. We also can ignite the senses just use sensory words such as fiery, savory and crispy. To describe our dishes, people are driven by the senses and by using simple yet tantalizing terms that speak to the each of the five senses, you paint a clear picture of what diners can expect from the dish. Know your audience. Are your diners mostly families or college students? Knowing the characteristic of the demography you are targeting makes it easier to hone in on specific menu items that will appeal to those customers. Do you know research show that men and women tend to order along gender baseline? So make sure your menu description account for both preference. Men tend to order meals that are described as being hearty and filling, while women lean towards lighter option. Crafting description that appeal to both of this group will help you menu appeal to people across the board. Last tips is design wisely. Your menu is an extension of your restaurant brand, and while just about every customer reads your menu, you typically have the attention. Organize your menu into categories to make it easier for guests to skim and quickly find what they are looking for. Call out special items with boxes, bold text and colors, which increase the likelihood this item will be seen and ultimately order. Less time they spend on the menu, the more time they have to eat and enjoy the food. Next, I do is I will presenting the next topic, factors that affect menu composition. 
Firstly, physical factors, availability of equipment and facilities needed for the preparation and serving of the menu. Variety and psychological factors, several menu items with low quality of product and more basic restaurant service. Guest expectation, menu items are associated with the specific establishment and standards. Next, time and seasonal consideration. This forces restaurants to include certain menu items or even eliminate any items. Appearance, temperature, texture, and consistency of menu items. This includes the preparation and serving processes. Labor consideration skills. This includes the experience and availability of the staff. Then, rating food preferences. Focusing on customer satisfaction and analysis of trends amongst regular guests. Truth in menu standards. It will affect menu designs, for example, the calories of each dish. Menu pricing. It aligns the selection of items to the affordability of restaurant's customer. Health concern. It affects the entire menu, which is certain healthier options. Lastly, patron expectation. It relates to the brand recognition, clear brand image, and also stereotypes. Food and nutrition in menu planning. Menu planning principles include Balance, nutritional quality, aesthetic, and variety, including color, texture, flavor, shapes, and the size of the food. The equipment and personnel available to produce and serve the menu are also important considerations in planning the menu. Food and Nutrition Food is anything that can be eaten or drink, which can be ingested or digested and absorbed by the body. It is used as energy source, building repair or protective material. Nutrition, in the other hand, is food at work or process by which all body parts receive and utilize nutrients. Nutrients is components or chemicals in food that needed to be grown, reproduced, and lead healthy life. There are two types of food components. Firstly, micronutrients, that includes carbohydrate, proteins, fats, and water. Then there are micronutrients, which only includes vitamins and minerals. This is the example of the pyramid food that can be used as a reference in direct intake for human body to them to get enough nutrition for human daily basis. Food and nutrition is important because a healthy diet throughout life will promote healthy pregnancy outcomes, support normal growth, development and aging, help to maintain a healthy body weight, and also reduces the risk of chronic disease that will lead to overall health and well-being. Importance of food and nutrition in menu planning. It is important to keep nutrition in mind when you are planning or creating a menu. Every ingredient that consumer have will be affecting the consumer. So it is important to blend proteins, vegetables, and carbs so that the consumer will get a little of everything. Run out a meal and make them feel better and more satisfied. It is important to know your consumer 
and need to increase portion sizes or proteins in any dishes on your menu planning that you serve in order to make sure that the food is satisfying enough for the customer to come again. That is all from us. Thank you.